Oh, this is my first time trying it because, you know, I didn't want to try the ops for a long time. <laughs> Yo, I like this part of the pork right here. That looks like that meat's going to come off real nicely. That's, and it that's did. the oof right there. I think has the best pho broth, chicken and beef that I've maybe ever had. Little known fact, Philadelphia has the largest amount of Vietnamese outside of California and Texas, which means the pho has to be banging and the Asian parties are super lit. So let's see how much better this Philly pho is than New York City. Welcome everybody to an episode of Fung Bros Food. We're here out in Philly today helping host a book event for our guy Simu Liu. Uh, but before we go to that event, I'm out here with the Viet Plug AB. What's good? And we are going to be going to the most iconic Vietnamese shops in all of Philly. All right, you guys have come from New York. You guys have been talking about Philly Pho for a minute. It's been a long time since you've been in the city. I'm going to take you guys to the top four spots in Philadelphia. All right, is one of the spots going to be your parents' shop? Of course. All right, but first, before that, we got to check out Pho 75. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thanks for clicking on this video. I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Helix. You heard me talk about them a month ago, but I'm here to give you an update to let you know how I'm sleeping. Now, let me get back to you in a month to update you on how I'm sleeping. But if you don't know, they are a premium mattress in a box company that matches your unique needs with the right type of mattress using their very simple but accurate sleep quiz. And right now, they are giving you up to $200 off your Helix mattress purchase, plus two free pillows if you go to helixsleep.com slash fungbros. I went to their site and took the quiz. They ended up matching me with a queen size Dawn Lux. It is their firm 14 inch mattress with hybrid foam spring cushioning, six layers of comfort and extra lumbar support. It has turned out to be perfect for me. The whole ordering process is stress-free and super easy. The Helix box comes straight to your door in a box. Delivery was free and they threw in two comfy pillows. Pull it out of the box, lay it out, let it expand. The whole process actually looks pretty cool. And one of the best things they do is give you a 100 night sleep trial so you can test it out and return the mattress if you don't like it. If it doesn't help you sleep better, then you get 100 nights on the bed before you make your final decision. Helix also offers a 10 year warranty, financing options, and flexible payment plans if you need as well. So quick update, I am sleeping good. I can fall asleep on my back or side and I'm instantly going to snoozing. I think for those who want a supportive but not rock hard mattress, this one is perfect. When I travel now, I literally miss my bed. So again, go to helixsleep.com slash phone bros for $200 off and two free pillows. Okay, now back to the video. All right, AB, what is the must get order here? You definitely get the pho balled up bit or any type of beef that you like if you don't like doing all the tripe and everything. But you definitely gotta get the hang zum and the nook bell, which is uh, like the fatty scallion oil and then the vinegar onions. Ooh. Ooh. Still to the brim. Okay, so the food's arrived and this looks like delicious pho, but it looks like pho. But these two things, we gotta talk about this, AB. All right, we got the nook bell right here, which is uh, the fat skimmed from the top of the broth, melted down with some uh, scallion tips. Okay. Just drop that into your pho. Hang them right here, which is vinegar onions. Oh, okay. So these are like pickled onions. You could throw it right in the bowl. So with the nook bell, do I just, just pour like it all that. in? Yeah, just pour, just pour a bit in. I mean, you don't want your cholesterol going too hot. <laughs> throw, throw that scallion. Okay, in. throw the scallion. There you go. Pho at pho 75. That is beefy and oily. Wow. See, I didn't even think about the sriracha or the hoisin yet. Guys, I'm telling you, for the price and it being in the city, plus the nook bell, the oil on top, I gotta give this a five out of five. <clears throat> you know what it is? It tastes like the broth could almost just be sold on its own as a beef soup. Hey, and you know it's good, because it's cash only. The second spot in the plaza is Pho Ga Tan Tan. Now, Pho Ga is not popular in every city. Like, for example, in New York, you can't find a good chicken pho, but out in Philly, you really can. Why is that? I think it's all about the ingredients. There's a lot of poultry shops that sell live chicken here. So, you know, that's where we get, that's where we source our meat. All right, let's go. Can I get high for a cone and a little finger? Two small ones. Not a small Okay. All right, what did you just order, AB? So I ordered two plain pho, small, and a half a chicken. That's how you're supposed to do it. You know, you get the chicken on the side, you kind of pick at it and put it in your bowl. Okay, so I saw that they also, uh, what is that, the chicken liver on top? Like the brown pieces? Yeah, you'll get some organs. You get liver, heart, gizzard as well. Is this pho guy? How does it match up to your parents' spot? Hang long. Yo, this is my first time trying it because, you know, I didn't want to try the ops for a long time. <laughs> see that yellow skin? Not Whoa. all. Wow. You see that yellow skin? Not all chicken. Whoa. 
come out like that. All right, AB, we got to be honest that you didn't want to try this spot because for a long time they were the direct competitor to one of your parents' spots. They were right across the street. And, you know, I had my own chicken fun. I just uh, didn't want to go over All right, all right, all right. So, so I need you to give an oath real quick that you are going to give your most honest opinion. And if it is better than your parents' spot, if it happens to be, then you're going to say it. I'm an honest guy. I'll, you know what, I'm gonna try it right now. So this style is not gonna be familiar to a lot of people outside of a Vietnamese area because you have a plain broth pho, right? Yep. And then you have the chicken on the side and we're gonna be dipping the chicken in this sauce right here with yep. the chilies and what, salt and lime? Yep, lemon pepper. Ooh. Man, it's different. It's definitely different from my mom's. It's way lighter. So grab this piece right here. Okay, you got the breast meat, I got a yeah. thigh piece. Okay. All right, you gotta dip it in the lemon pepper right here. They like to call it the crack sauce. Okay. All right, AB, so in your initial thoughts, which one is better? My mom's spot's better, man, come on. <laughs> this one's pretty good, though. It's good, no, it's right. delicious, man. Right, yo, we're gonna, we're gonna try Tang Long at the end of this video. When you guys order pho ga in other cities, it will not come like this. The chicken will be like chicken breast pieces in here. Basically, if the spot doesn't focus on pho ga, it's not gonna be good. I'm gonna give it a 4.75 out of five. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room for the five, but this chicken is delicious. That's good. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of five. Especially once you dip the chicken in the crack sauce and then some of the crack sauce gets in the pho, definitely a 4.5 out of five. All right, so we just left pho ga tan tan and I'm gonna say I'm gonna bump them up another 0.25 for how many ABGs were in there eating pho. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of shorties in uh, yeah. South Philly, man. More people come out here than Kensington. So. All right, so we ate at two spots already. I need to take a break. I need some refreshing food tea. Let's go into Mr. Wish right here. Have a drink, make a wish. Look how murky that is, I like that. That's how you know there's a lot of fruit. I have not had a drink like this since the Xilin Night Market in Taipei, Taiwan. Bro, Mr. Wish is from Taiwan, so you know they're giving you authentic vibe. All right, our third spot is Cafe Nan. What are we gonna get here, AB? Yeah, I get the Boon Ba Hui, fried chicken, and the beef pho. Oh, no, Thanks, bro, doing? appreciate that. Yeah. I get the Boon Ba Hui up there. Um, with the pig. With the pig feet and everything, um, chicken wings, chicken wings and uh, the bar with the bone and everything. Yo, I like this part of the pork right here. That looks like that meat's gonna come off real nicely, that's, and it that's did. That's the hoof right there. Mm. All right, this is the bumble way here. I'm gonna go in. First thing I'm gonna do is taste the broth. It's spicy, man. You can get it spicier too. You ask for the Ooh. House peppers. <coughs> yeah. Lots of kick. It's gonna kick you. Cafe Nan. That is really good. I'm telling you, this is one of the most hearty beef fuzz in the city. Like, this will have you full for most of the day. You know, sometimes you eat pho, you get hungry later on. The broth here is really like husky, so. All right, personally, guys, all the pho I've had in this video is delicious so far, but I'm gonna say that this gets the edge over pho 75, man. This is so beefy. There's a little bit of oil on top. Like you said, it hits hard. That broth is husky. I love it. Guys, I mean, this broth is so rich. It really feels like I'm eating like a tonkatsu ramen or, you know, I'm going to a really rich, fatty uh, Chinese beef noodle soup spot, the Neuro Man. And I'm just going to tell you this, man. This might not be for everybody, but this bowl of pho is for me. I have uh, two other iconic dishes here at Cafe Nan. You got the Vietnamese chicken wings right here. Let me break that open for you. As you know, I'm a chicken wing fiend. It's, there's a scallion, there's a fried shrimp already, and then it's wrapped in a one-ton skin. I'm gonna eat this first, man, because right, go for it. I never had this before. Because I've had Vietnamese like shrimp rolls before, but yeah. not like this. Wings, no sauce. Your fingers are burning, aren't they? Yeah, 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 I'm gonna, it's <laughs> worth it, it's worth the burn, it's worth the burn. All right, you guys, taking a quick break from fuzz spots here in Philadelphia. We're in South Philly right now. AB, tell us where we're at. We're at P's and Q's. Let's check it out. Let's get you fitted for the scene movement tonight. All right. All right, we're with the owners of P's and Q's, Rick and Key. What's up? Yo, man, tell us about you guys' shop. P's and Q's, uh, it's not just a clothing store. We feel like we're more of a community-based shop that kind of really focused on like uh, the creative vibes for Philadelphia. Yeah, and we've been here for uh, ten years, almost 10 years now, so we are happy to, excited to serve the community. Yeah, this one is dope. If I grab a pair of short suit, what do you think of this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this that. is the Rick set. You gotta grab this. He actually designed it himself right here. You know, I heard Diodora is local to Philly now as far as their American headquarters. I gotta get, get a pair of those. Yeah. 
This is tough, man, with the aged midsole made in Italia. Hey. Oh, man, I love it right now. This is so in right now, and I love that everything's in-house, too. This is the P's and Q's in-house brand. I think you need a rose cap. Oh, man, this is dope. What is this based off of? Uh, this rose cap, uh, if you see on the side, we originally came from Chinatown, Philly, actually, so it says Chinatown in Chinese. Right, it says Tong Yang Gai. Yeah, right and then... <laughs> Finished! There you go. Yo! All right, you guys, we're gonna do a quick tour of P's and Q's, man. What are we looking at? Uh, this section here, there used to be a map behind here. It didn't work out for us. We put a whole bunch of wood on there, slapped some book bags, some travel goods. Over here is our particular our section, the local section. So all anything that's local brand Philadelphia is all right here in this oh, whole section. From okay. Peritotal. Okay. And I think it's really important that we bring in local brands because a lot of the young kids are trying to start up a brand and we got they need a platform. So we offer them our, you know, one of our platforms to sell their stuff here. And, mm. you know, they keep all the profits and everything on for themselves. And you know, it's really awesome that you know you have real estate in the store when you have a brand. Next up, AB, where are we going? Going to home base, Kensington, Tang Long, let's go. The dragon. All right, so for our last and final Vietnamese spot, we have made it to North Philly. We're in Kensington, and we are at your family spot, Tang Long. Can you tell me what it means? Tang Long used to be the old name of Hanoi before it changed to Hanoi, and Tang Long means like rising dragon. Let's go inside. Right. Actually, like six years ago, we filmed that episode of our TV show, Broke Bites, What the Fung here. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that was cool. It was a long time ago, but, man. But now we back, Let's and go. we're doing a YouTube style. Let's go in the back. Can I ask you, what makes your guys' uh, chicken fuss so good? Sauce. The sauce is the money. The lemon grass dipping sauce with the pepper. All right, our fourth and final spot. Man, we're here at your family spot, Tang Long. The food has came out. Now, you guys have actually won an award for the beef pho. We got recognized by the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The newspaper said the beef pho uh, was the one, but yeah. you would say that the chicken pho is the one. Yeah, because we had the chicken shop right next door, the live poultry shop, so it's as fresh as it can get. They're literally just clucking right next door. We got to start off with the chicken. Uh, yellow skin, of course, looking very juicy. Going to dip it in the sauce right here. Uh, gonna get that lemon pepper. Maybe the chicken that Pho got Tan Tan was, was very comparable, but I think your guys' broth is way better. Hey man, that's your opinion. I already <laughs> said I like my mom's spot, I'm already biased. That's true, but no, honestly, that was really good, man. And we ate here before six years ago, and I thought it was the best Pho I've ever had, and I would still say it still ranks up there. Compare this to Pho Ga Tan Tan. Tang Long's broth for the chicken is way stronger. I think um, the chicken is comparable. I think the chicken gives a slight notch. I will give, maybe, just a shout out to Foot Agat Tan Tan. I like the crack sauce a lot, a lot. Okay. But, but in terms of where you guys need to go in Philly to get chicken pho, let me get a dark meat piece right here. Come to Tang Long. Tang Long, Kensington, I'm not just saying this because AB's behind the camera is the best overall full god I've had in America. It's almost like it has its own chicken note bill on top, which is like chicken oil and chicken essence. All right, you guys, uh, like we said, Tang Long, best chicken pho in Philly. However, we do gotta get into their beef because uh, they won an award for the beef too. There's a couple spots in New York I gotta shout out to. One spot in Chinatown, Pho Bang. It, it does taste like Philly level. That's the new standard, is it, it's Philly Hold level. on, hold on, a lot of ginger. Very Hanoi style. Wow, no, your guys' broth is crazy too. <clears throat> you know what I noticed about this? Is that I almost have a reverse vibe from Cafe Non. Cafe Non did not have a lot of ginger and it had a ton of the fatty vibe. This has very little oil on top and a ton of ginger. All right, so the Boon Cha Hanoi is pretty much like a Boon Tit Nung, so it's like pork belly, but then the difference is the way it's set up. So you see it's marinating in the fish sauce. You get the meatball right here too, which is my favorite. Meatball, I got the carrots and whatnot. Do I need any extra sauce? Up to you. Need a little sauce bit. Sauce however you want. A little, little sauce. And then I just eat it like that? Yeah, just eat it. Right. It's almost, yeah, it is a deconstructed vermicelli bowl right here. Let's go in. Let me get you some. All right, Boon Cha Hanoi from Tang Long in Kensington. You guys the spot overall, beef, chicken, Boon Cha Hanoi. It's crazy, man. I hope you're not just saying that to hype me up because we homies. I'm really but... not. I'm really not, man. That is one of the best Boon Cha Hanoi's I've ever had. Of course, we saw VNTN. Uh, Sunny, this is your restaurant. This is the first loud spot in Philly, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. My okay. parents started it. 
2002. Okay, and then when you took over, did you try to like switch things up and update it, or, or did you? How I much mean, of the same did you keep? It? I kept it by like 80 percent the same, and then 20 percent is my little twist to it. All right, tell us about what we're looking at because this is like pretty fancy presentation. <laughs> Thank you. I try. So the first one we have is uh, we actually call it site golf in Lao. I know some places call it site oa. Pretty much the same thing. The difference is site oa is more fermented, so it has a little sour to this to it. This is the site golf, which is not fermented. It's gonna be a pork lemongrass sausage. Mm. Um, so my twist will be the ginger habanero sauce. Every family have a, their own version, and my my version is with the, the sauce to dip it with. Okay. Um, here is my mom's recipe of the beef jerky. We call it sin hang. Um, it's gonna be paired with my mom's sauce here. It's a chili paste with a little bit of peanut in there and soy sauce. It's called nam pao with the cured pork. And this is a lettuce wrap. This is the most popular like party food in the Lao culture. And this is my twist right here, bing kai or tot bing kai, which is uh, fried chicken wings. Chili oil that I developed during the pandemic. Sold online and, it's, um, and also at some local markets. Yep, local right. markets, online. And this is you with your hand. Yep. All right, my hands are clean. Hands are clean. We got it going with the soy gok. Soy gok. Soy gok. Yep. All right. Soy gok. Roasted green chili pepper. We call this the gel. Keep this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I just ate a bunch of Vietnamese food, but I got a second win. My, my other stomach opened up. Alright, the gut, yeah, what, what are this we? This is the Sin Hang, which is a beef jerky. Yep. And this one here is the, the crowd favorite. It's like sweet. Ooh. Cheers? Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Lao. It's crispy, sweet. Like a crispy, sweet fried rice with, um, no, a little bit of coconut in there. Coconut. Mm -hmm. Next up, we got the wings. Bingai. One fighter, okay. <laughs> Good. I love Lao food. And of course, here we got the Lao papaya salad to end it off. Cool, minty, sweet, a little bit of spice. And you know what I like about this one? Sometimes, um, in the uh, papaya salad, you don't really get much greens, but this one got a pretty good amount of greens. Go to Tang Long and go to Van Thiem, North Philly, Kensington, boom. And everybody, that wraps up our Vietnamese crawl through Philly. Uh, AB, why do you think the Vietnamese food in Philly is considered so good though? Like, is there some historical context maybe? Yeah, like there's been a lot of immigrants from the 80s. I heard even some from the 50s that came over here. So there's a large Vietnamese presence here. So when immigrants come, they're gonna bring their food with them. Philadelphia has the best Vietnamese food on the East Coast. Now, I do need to spend a little bit more time in Boston. I heard Boston's pretty good, you know, but uh, I know that compared to New York, dollar for dollar, Philly's got it. All right, you guys, we are here for Simu Liu's uh, book launch in Philly of his book, We Were Dreamers. It's his autobiography. We are going to be uh, moderating tonight, so it's really cool to see everybody in line. Like, take a look. All right, you guys, we are headed to the green room right now. Hit us up to Simu. Exactly 
why it's so important to kind of coax it out of them because they really are these incredible stories of inspiration, of sacrifice, of perseverance. I think, I think, I think it's this. Even though I wanted to rebel against my parents' expectations of me, I was so, like their influence of like success, the definition of success was so pervasive that it affected, like I was completely unable to imagine a pathway outside of the one that they had set for me. All right, everybody, so we didn't have time to go get Philly cheesesteaks in Philly. I know there's a lot of great spots, not Pat's and Gino's only, but De La Sandro's, there's Angelo's, there's Jack's, there's Max's. However, I'm getting the most authentic cheesesteaks at Shorty's in New York City. They bring their bread in from Philly every day and they bake it here fresh. Guys, this is the original Philly cheesesteak with whiz, with onions. Uh, let me try this out. That bread is really good and the whiz is flowing out. And I gotta say, man, maybe, maybe the Philly cheesesteak is the precursor to the chopped cheese. I mean, I know the chopped cheese is kind of like a cheeseburger, but it's kind of like a Philly too. So I don't know, maybe it's like a cross between, but this is pretty good. It's juicy, the broccoli rob is hitting. Wow, wow. Hey, I know not everybody has time to go to Philly, and sometimes when you are in Philly, you're too busy to go get the cheesesteaks, but I would say Shorty's is a pretty good, you know, representation of it. I would say my first choice is definitely the original Wit Wiz and Wit Onions, and then I would say that roast pork sandwich is pretty good too, but you know what, you don't have to take my word for it because I know I'm not a Philly food expert, but you know, you check out the reviews for Shorty's and you know, come check it out in New York.